40 years ago this park was full of people and it was completely trashed and in two days I saw two spotted deer. It's a miracle what has happened. K. Ulis Karanth is the director of the Wildlife Conservation Society India program and one of India's leading tiger experts. For the past 20 years, he has been working to save the tiger population here in Nagarhole National Park and across India. Tigers are certainly worth saving because they represent a part of the nature from which we all came. And I think we, the present generation, have certainly no right to wipe them off the face of the earth. Nagarhole National Park is in the southern Indian state of Karnataka. Besides tigers, the park is home to a variety of other animals, including rhesus monkeys, wild pigs, deer, and elephants. And it's also home to the original tribal people of the area. It has been inhabited by people for thousands of years. Hmm. But mostly it was a malarial tract. Only the local tribal people who have resistance to malaria lived in extremely small numbers. Probably all of Nagarhole might have had two or three families. That's the density at which people lived and which, which people can still live at that density and live off the land. But and in that density they would pose no threat yeah, to the yeah. wildlife. Instead of having 1,000 families, if you are two or three, yes, they won't pose any threat. Intrusive uses uh, that humans impose on tigers include primarily hunting of their food, that is the prey animals like wild pig and uh, deer and wild cattle, destruction of their habitat through excessive livestock grazing and forest fires, logging, firewood and forest product collection, and also the modern development that takes in roads, highways, dams into their habitats. Primary way in which we can save tigers is to give them room to survive. That's all it takes. But that requires relocating hundreds of tribal families living inside the park. People who are in the park even now depend heavily on uh, the economy outside for their employment. So they go out and there's a booming coffee plantation economy outside. There's a farming economy on the eastern side of the park and people go and work. So that's the main source of employment anyway. Once the government moves the tribals out of the park, there is considerable pressure on them to make life better for tribals, who have benefited least from India's economic boom. This includes access to better schools and jobs, and something they didn't have inside the forest, title to the land. But then there are those who don't want to leave the forest because it's the only home they've known. And then there are those who are holding out for more from the government in terms of compensation. Despite good intentions, the road to relocation has been littered with unkept government promises. The land is not fertile, the fences to keep out menacing elephants don't, and the jobs are not consistent. However, in the park, the relocation of entire villages is yielding positive results. This was a rice paddy fields 30 years ago. It's a grassland, so they hunt on the edges. They kind of hide and stalk. And this has been 30 years. They've had 30 years to come back. Nature comes back dramatically once you remove the pressures. Nature is very resilient and tigers are species that reproduce very well and if you take the pressures off, they can come, come back very quickly. With the current tiger population around 1,400, the Indian government has ordered the creation of eight new tiger reserves in addition to the existing 28. My experience with Nagarhole of 40 years is uh, at the end of it all, when I came here, I thought nothing would survive beyond a decade. On the other hand, I see this wonderful spectacle of recovery. So it's a message of hope. I think this type of recovery can take place everywhere if people, uh, governments and conservationists work together very carefully and mutually respectfully.